So I've um, got this filter I made a couple of weeks ago. It needs a few modifications because the uh, funnel sticks down too far and so on. And uh, But you can see how much stuff it's pulling up from the bottom. I only need one uh, air stone from each of the two pumps I've got. I've got one pump that operates all day and one that operates uh, from a charged up battery overnight. So here are the old bits of filter wall coming out. And then the next thing to take out is the uh, activated charcoal, which is supposed to help take some of the nutrients out of the water so as to combat the duckweed that I've been getting in the pond. And then the next thing is some of the uh, filter foam. So the next thing to come out is a layer of finer filter foam. And then there's a layer of coarser filter foam, which I'm later going to cut in half because it's a bit thicker than the finer filter foam. So basically I'm just adjusting this filter and I'm going to um, change what's in the bottom of it because I want a better area for um, a uh, biological filter to build up. So let's get the bits of uh, gravel that were in the bottom of this removed and then I'll be ready to start rebuilding it. So the first thing I'm going to do is to mark up a piece of filter wool which I'm then going to cut round in a circle to go in the bottom of the uh, floating planter. I need the filter wool to stop the gravel that I'm going to put in from falling through the holes in the bottom and I thought I'd use filter wool to do that rather than anything else so we'll see how it goes for a, a while and then uh, maybe change it again but at the moment this is looking pretty good. So once I've cut the thing out I'm then going to need to make a hole in the middle for the pipes to go through and in order to do that I'll fold it in half. Where are we? I'll put that to one side for a minute. Ah, yes. First of all, I tried pushing the scissors through, but that didn't really work. So then I folded it in half and cut to the middle each way. You see, I'm just making the first cut there. And then fold it the other way and make the second cut. And that's quite a good way to make a, um, a, a cut for a pipe, because you've basically got two slots at right angles to each other. And that's all ready to go into the... So I'm just putting the filter wool in now and pressing it down, ready to have the gravel put on top. The idea is that the wool and the gravel will form a place for a biological filter to gradually grow up. So the gravel's going in now, and then I'm going to spread it around evenly and pick up the bits I've dropped and so on, and generally tidy the whole job up. So finally pushing down the filter now and getting ready to put in the first piece of filter wool, a uh, filter foam, I mean, which is the uh, coarse layer of filter wool a filter foam. Now that's a bit too thick. I want to make it roughly the same layer as the finer filter foam. So I'm just going to iteratively cut into it from the side there until I can take it in half and it'll be about right then. And I've got some loose bits which you can see just in front of the floating filter which I'll use to fill in the gaps because I cut it as a hexagon and I made the hexagon a little bit too small but that's not a problem. I can easily fill in any gaps by just putting in some of the offcuts. Um, because I want to try and make sure that the uh, uh, water that goes through the filter does actually pass through at least some of the layers in order to remove um, dirt and other bits and pieces that need removing. And there we are, that's the coarse filter foam going in. And now the uh, uh, little bits to fill in the uh, corners are going in. Just pushing them in and making it all nice and neat as much as I can. Would have been better, of course, if I cut it the right size in the first place, but unfortunately that's not what I did. So there we are, all ready to go. So now the finer, that finer filter foam goes on top. That's about the right size already. I don't need to pack that one out. And then the last thing to go on top is going to be the activated um, charcoal uh, foam, um, which is still good. I'm um, in a little while in a, in a month or two's time I'll have to either replace it or pop that bit in the oven just to reactivate it. Now those filter walls are a bit too dirty so we get a clean one and I'll cut into the middle of it like I did with the wool that goes at the bottom uh, then turn it right angles and cut into the middle of it again and then it'll fit nicely over the pipe so there it is over the pipe and I'm going to tuck in the corners and generally neaten the whole thing up ready to go in the pond And there we are, all done and all ready to be put back into operation. I'm going to need to do a few extra jobs, of course, but that's just about right. So there's some glue there that needs to be cleaned off, and I need to clean some glue off the funnel as well, and then I can stick it all together and get the glue gun out. Okay, just making sure it fits. That's good. So 
clean it all up and then get the glue gun and uh, glue gun it around. I haven't got a, um, any film of me glue gunning it, but I did that uh, not long after the bit you can see I'm doing there. I'm just pushing the funnel in. Actually, what I did was I found a slightly smaller funnel because I, one of the things I really wanted to do was to get the filter a bit further up from the bottom of the pond so it was sucking up water rather than sucking up sludge from the bottom of the pond. And I seem to have managed to do that because it no longer clogs up anywhere near as quickly as it used to. So there's the two pipes. And you'll see uh, in a minute after the next clip of video of it working that I had to make a slight modification to the new smaller filter that I put on there to avoid it sucking up things that I really didn't want to filter at all. And finally, here is a photograph of the uh, finished assembly ready to go back in the pond. So here is the um, filter running and there's an air stone beside it. So I've got one air stone inside the filter and one beside it. And you can see it's lifting the water up quite nicely and also aerating the pond very well. Now this was an hour or two later and you see that brown halo round where the pipe comes up. That's Daphnia that the thing has pulled up from the, the uh, pond because they're swimming around in the water. Now fortunately they were okay. I was able to put them back into the pond and they swam off. But I needed to find a way to stop the pond, uh, stop the filter from uh, sucking up living creatures. So this is what my wife came up with. It's one of her old pop socks. Later on, we added a couple of elastic bands to hold it on more tightly so that we didn't get uh, water or glass being sucked into the filter either. So the next thing I needed to do was to make a housing to put the uh, pumps in, because you can see that one is actually hanging out of the old housing and I've got two of them to accommodate. They'd never both go in there. So I need to get that sorted out. So I've made myself a new little wall cupboard, as it were. And there's going to be a, a hinged door on the front of it and I need to cut some holes in the side which I do shortly after taking this little clip. So here are the three solar cells. The two with the black border on the right for the air stones. The one with the silver border is for a water pump that powers our waterfall. Moving round, here we have the new housing we built to put the air pumps in for the air filters. There's plenty of spare room in there for other stuff as well. And then down into the pond, there's the air filter, a couple of extra air stones down there, and that thick uh, pipe you can see going up under the slab of concrete, that is the uh, uh, pump for the fountain. Then we've got another little solar power pump here that just pumps water up occasionally. I don't know whether I'm going to leave that in there. And the frog spawn is just down in that corner, just down in that corner, just there. And it's just started to develop into, um, <coughs> into sort of uh, tadpole shapes inside the frog spawn. And there's some sign that they're moving. So fairly soon now they'll develop into tadpoles and eat their way out of their yolk sacs.